We're catching up with Lotto ahead of her very first Grammy. Doja Cat comes to Britney's defense. Taylor's ex, Taylor Lautner, relives that infamous VMA moment. We take you inside LA's hottest pre-Grammy party. Elton John is officially the king of tours, and we break down this year's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominees. It's Thursday, February 2nd. I'm Tetris for Billboard News. Let's talk about some Queen supporting Queen. Doja Cat is saying leave Britney alone, and we all agree. Doja sat down with Variety magazine, and since she's been slaying in her clean-shaven look, she's been compared to Britney Spears, and she's not having it, especially with the trolls. It's so incredibly disrespectful for people to be minimizing what Britney went through and make a joke out of something that was very serious and a big deal in her life. Doja continued, Every time I see a comment like that, I can't compute what's happening other than it's just an awful thing. Girl, I get it. I've been battling for Britney in these streets all my life. But why did Doja decide to shave her locks? I wasn't working out and wasn't really taking care of myself in the way that I wanted to. I was like, I need to do something. So I just chopped it all off and I could see the shape of my head. I could see my whole face. It's the best choice I've ever made and I've never felt more beautiful. We couldn't agree more, Doja. Everybody remembers this VMA moment. I, I'm really happy for you, I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. But Taylor Swift's ex, Taylor Lautner, had a front row seat to the scene and he told his account of the situation to his wife on their podcast, The Squeeze. I'm just assuming that this whole thing was a practice and rehearse skit. Yeah. Um, because why else would Kanye West be jumping up on the stage interrupting Taylor Swift? Rightfully so. It just didn't make sense. Looking back, Lautner wishes he did something after he realized presenting the award to his girlfriend at the time didn't go as planned. The second she turned back around and I saw her face for the first time, I was like, oh, that wasn't good. <laughs> God. Probably should have said something. <laughs> <laughs> that moment had to have hurt, but Miss Swift seems to be doing all right, so on to the next era. This year's Best New Artist category is stacked. One front runner for the trophy is Lotto. She's been rapping since she was eight, but she told Nina Rohani she still feels like a new artist. Do you see yourself as a new artist? I feel like I'm a new artist for me probably like every, every month. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm constantly evolving. To me, I am a new artist. Yeah. I would say I'm a new artist. Especially the content that I'm about to roll out. Like, it's a whole fresh, like, new me. And she's taking in every second of this moment in her life, and we love to see it. So is there anyone that you're hoping you bump into at the Grammys? I don't know who I'm not gonna bump into. <laughs> Listen, I'm about to be. You know what? They just gonna have to be. <laughs> But I'm, I'm, listen, I'm ready, I'm prepared. Like, I'm documenting everything. Just know that. Oh my God, I'm excited. Are you I'm, gonna have your, I can't your, like... wait to tell my kids about me going to the Grammys for the first time. Like, I'm so excited. For our full interview with Lotto, head to billboard.com. Elton John now has the highest grossing tour of all time after announcing in 2018 he was retiring from the road after the farewell Yellow Brick Road tour. Well, here to help us break it down is senior charts and data analyst Eric Frankenberg. Hey, thanks for calling in. Of course. Hey, Tetris. So how much did our boy Elton make? Elton's tour started in September of 2018, and since then it's made over $800 million, $818 million to be exact. Whoa. Okay. Well, how many shows did it take to get there? I think at this point it's about 280, and there's still 50 to come in Europe in the spring and summer. So this man could basically make a billion dollars. It's probably gonna end closer to the $900 million range, but it will be the first to get there, obviously, since it's already the biggest of all time. Well, who else is even close to this record? There's Coldplay, Ed Sheeran's back on tour with the Mathematics Tour, Harry Styles is still on tour, and then you've got Taylor Swift and Beyonce who have just announced new tours for the summer that could be making tons and tons of cash. Well, Taylor already took tons of cash from me, and Beyonce is ready to jump in my wallet too, so I can't wait. Thanks for calling in, Eric. Of course, thanks for having me. Ahead of this weekend's Grammy Awards, Billboard celebrated the executives that make your favorite music possible. For anyone in the room, if you have a young person who's ambitious, you might want to see them. You might want to take the time because that fuse still burns for us. Billboard held their annual Power 100 party last night, celebrating executives behind the magic. 
It was a star-filled night with Kim Petras introducing Monty and Avery Lipman of Republic Records as this year's Record Label of the Year honorees. Republic Records, best label ever. Changed my life, period. Uh, I thought I was gonna perform on tables and gay clubs for life, but these guys saw something in me. And Bad Bunny gave his first all-English speech when he introduced his manager and label CEO, Noah Assad, with the honor of Executive of the Year. This award is the proof that I'm not working alone. It's the proof that dreams come true, uh, but never is only by yourself. We're gonna keep working harder, you know, you know. You know, there's a lot more stories to be told. You know, we're, we're still in chapter one. Other honorees of the night include Sherry's Clark Sorez and Chairman Bang. Across town, Billboard presented the Songwriter Showcase, where we honored some of the year's Grammy nominees who have written for acts like Taylor Swift, Beyonce, and Harry Styles. Honorees included Liz Rose, Nisha Charles, and Jimmy Allen. I still hey, that you're gone, I wish you were here. But I hope I'm making you proud to know you up there looking down on Amy Allen joined Sabrina Carpenter on stage to show off her singing and songwriting skills. Crush my heart, wreck my image. And Demi Lovato sang an amazing song for the first time, co-written by nominee Laura Belts. What a great way to kick off Grammy Week. And we've got so much more Grammy coverage for you to come. The 2023 nominees for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame have been announced, and it's a great list. Is it worth it? Let me work it. I put my thing down, flip it, and reverse it. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame revealed the nominees for the Rock Hall's Class of 2023 on Wednesday. Eight are first-timers, two of which received their nom within their first year of eligibility. Nominated artists include art rockateur Kate Bush, rootsy hitmaker Sheryl Crow, hip-hop iconoclast Missy Elliott, metal legends Iron Maiden, post-punk turned dance rock pioneers Joy Division and New Order, eccentric pop icon Cyndi Lauper, pop titan George Michael, country goat Willie Nelson, rap metal firebrands Rage Against the Machine, grunge trailblazers Soundgarden, soul vocal pros The Spinners, alt-hip-hop forefathers A Tribe Called Quest. Garage Blues revivalist The White Stripes, and caustic singer-songwriter Warren Zevin. That's our show for today. It's almost the weekend, but come back tomorrow because we're going to be talking to BB Rexa, and we're also breaking down what you can expect all weekend long from the Grammys. Running it down for you always, I'm Tetris Kelly, and this is Billboard News.